Hey there, welcome to Old Man Runner. In today's video, I'm gonna be this, the ASICS Metaspeed Sky Plus. First, I'm gonna show a little video of me testing them. Then I'm gonna put them on the turntable and list their specifications. Then I'm gonna review them. And finally, I'm gonna see if I can recommend them. I bought the shoe because I have the uh, ASICS Metaspeed Sky and the ASICS Metaspeed Edge. I've run <laughs> two marathons in the sky. I know it's hard to tell the difference. And I set a personal best in my last one in, in that shoe. So they are my speed running shoes of choice. And in this video, I'm trying to see the changes that have been made in the Metaspeed Sky Plus, tease out some of the differences between the edge and the sky, and come to some conclusions. And there's a lot in this video, so there's chapter markers below so you can skip on to the bits you're interested in. I made a video of me testing the shoes and I was particularly interested in the ground contact time, the impact with hitting the ground, which is pretty much most of what I filmed. I took three speeds, three shoes, an easy speed, a kind of tempo speed, my marathon pace, and then I also did kind of sprinting, just to see if I could see anything from, from the video. And like all these videos, you can slow them down, you can pause them if there's something you wanted to see. I wouldn't read too much into it, but I thought it was interesting to have a look at. So uh, I took them off to uh, where I find easy to film, the roof of uh, the Technological University Dublin. So let's go for a run and see the shoes in action. I hope you enjoyed my little testing video. Let's put the shoes on the turntable and look at their specifications. ASICs say that the shoe weighs 204 grams or 7.2 ounces. This shoe is a US 13, EU 48, UK 12, BR 46, CN 305, brackets 2.5. In this size, it weighs in the left shoe 255 grams or nine ounces, and in the right shoe 249 grams or 8.8 .8 ounces. It has a 39 millimeter stack height it has a four millimeter drop. ASICs say the Metaspeed Sky Plus racing shoes are designed for stride style runners who are looking to start fast and finish faster. Runners wearing these shoes will be able to take longer strides while conserving energy with each step. Thanks to an energetic midsole foam and a propulsive carbon plate, runners wearing these shoes will be able to conserve more energy while maintaining their pace at the later stages of the race. Let's review the shoe and see if what ASIC says is true. My initial impression when I got the shoes out of the box was how pungent they were. I mean, I get a lot of shoes, but these were wow. <laughs> Whatever glue they put in these things. Uh, the other thing was a visual pop. They're bright, uh, they're a bright color. I mean, I, I like bright colors as you can probably tell. And uh, yeah, I liked, immediately I liked looking at them. But the thing I really noticed was here is the increased forefoot bulk. You really notice it. I think it's a, it's a good improvement in a marathon shoe and where you're looking for more cushioning. And I think it probably the, the increased cushioning, which is very noticeable, uh, provides a bit of separation between the Sky Plus and the Edge Plus. You can immediately tell that there's more foam in the forefoot. So I thought I'd ask ASICs, why and, and, and get some particulars. Anyway, uh, Gavin at ASICS confirmed the stack height has gone up to 39 millimeters and the drop is five millimeters. So 39 to 34 millimeters. I previously checked with ASICS and the sky is in terms of stack and drop is 33 to 28 millimeters in men's, 31 to 26 in women's. The edge is 29 to 21 in men's and 28 to 20 in women's. And the improved toe shape allowed for more foam. I mentioned that you can see it in, in the forefoot, but of course you can feel it when you put it on. And uh, 40 millimeters is the maximum height allowed by World Athletics for road shoes. And uh, I think it's 20 millimeter on the track. Now the Alpha Fly is 39 millimeters. The new Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 has gone up to 39 millimeters. And I guess 
this has gone to 39 millimeters as well. So uh, I'm guessing they go as close as possible to the 40 millimeters. And I say the reason they're 39 or 39 and a half sometimes is for ma manufacturing tolerances so that I know rare event that someone would be pulled over and their shoe height checked, uh, it'll probably fit within the 40 millimeters. ASICs say, and it's complicated, that stride style runners gain speed by increasing the length of their stride. Cadence style runners gain speed by increasing the frequency of the steps per minute, and also by increasing their stride to uh, an extent. They say that stride runners have a, lo <laughs> a larger vertical oscillation and cadence have a shorter vertical oscillation. So, you know, yeah, I guess you're leaping higher in, in, in the stride style than in, in the cadence style. Now, for the stride style, they're saying that the Sky Plus with the more foam, bigger bounce, the longer stride is the shoe and the cadence style runners, the Edge Plus is the shoe to choose. So it's that simple, or is it? Well, my experience is slightly more nuanced. I would pick the Sky or Sky Plus for marathon, the more cushioning, um, the longer stride that would help you towards the end of the marathon. I've run two marathons in them. But at a shorter race, 10 kilometers or less, I would pick the Edge or the Edge Plus. Um, the lower vertical oscillation, I don't need as much foam uh, for cushioning over a shorter distance. And so long races, I'd pick the Sky Plus. Shorter races, I'd pick the Edge Plus. The Edge happens to be my lightest carbon plate shoe. I think it'd be a, a good match or give a good run to the Takumi Sen 8 or to uh, Nike Streak Fly. But uh, as I'll be running the Berlin Marathon, that's the next race I've planned, I bought the Sky Plus. So that gives you an overview of the shoe. I'll try and dive into a little more detail on the actual shoe. It's another one of these ain't broke, don't fix it. A lot of it is very similar to the uh, Sky, the Sky Plus, very similar to Sky. I presume it's the same at the Edge and the Edge Plus, but we'll stick the light in. And the upper is very similar to the original shoe, very breathable. You can see the light pouring through. Um, a very minimal upper, but having run two marathons in the Sky, it is, uh, I didn't find it uncomfortable at all. Um, I don't imagine the shoe will last too long. There's two marathons plus change in these. They've worn here. Uh, there's less miles in, in the edge, but it's also worn badly at the back. Uh, not off-putting. I mean, you wouldn't expect uh, a marathon shoe or a, a speed shoe to last that long. So I'm guessing you get about 200K out of them. Uh, I love the tongue on the shoe. Um, it's uh, very thin. It's like an Alcantara, a fixed weight. The best thing about the shoe, the biggest change, is the laces. The laces on uh, these two shoes, they're horrible. They're like a, they're like cheap string. Uh, these are, are like those on the Alpha Fly with a little bit of locking in between them. That is a significant improvement. On the old shoe, they nodded all over the place for me. So uh, they're the, ma the major change, ironically, is in the laces. Um, the liner is fixed. Uh, there's another thing is that the, the, the original has a, has a sort of a, a bonded strip at the back here. I've said it before, the midsole has a lot more foam, the FF Blast Turbo, I think it is. And on the outsole, with this, this sort of uh, thin pattern, I think it's about one and a half mil, they've gone from circles to ovals. Uh, not sure why, quite like the circles. Not that you ever see them, but I don't think that makes much of a difference. But it's the foam. The foam in the midsole is the big difference between the new versions and the old versions. The changes between the original version are largely in the technical department down in the... Uh, midsole. There's also some changes in the laces, but it's visually a different shoe. It doesn't have as much pop as the original shoe. This says Metaspeed Sky, not Metaspeed Sky Plus. It's the same on the edge. It says Edge, not Edge Plus. It used to say Tokyo. There's a sort of ugly script down here that'll wear off pretty fast. Um, these are Velvet Pine and Safety Yellow. Um, my other ones are Sunrise Red and White. They really have pop. I mean, they're now available in a second uh, color. But when these came out, I was watching the Olympics last year and also I was watching the marathon and the triathlon. You could really see the red of the ASICs. You couldn't really tell which was the edge or the sky, um, but you could really tell that people were running, a lot of people were running in Metaspeeds. In terms of the feel, I suppose, unsurprisingly, they feel more cushioned than the uh, original sky. Um, I didn't like the Alpha Fly, which is very cushioned, um, squidgy for me. And they're not as firm as the Ultra Vanish Carbon, which I do like. I really like the ride in that shoe. My guess though is, is that look, on, on a performance shoe, um, you you know, what they feel like maybe doesn't matter so much, but but based on my experience of running them in the original one, the Sky, they've been great, and I expect these to be just as good, if not better. 
The grip on the shoe is nothing special. Uh, if I was running a long race in the wet, I wouldn't wear these, but uh, running in the dry, they'll be fine. In terms of cost, the shoe is 250 euro here in Ireland, or 240 dollars, 220 pounds, or 280 Australian dollars. Not cheap, but there hasn't been a rise, at least in the European uh, price. It's the same 250 euro, and that's kind of the benchmark for a lot of the premium end carbon plate shoes. It's the same price for the Ultra Adventure Carbon and the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. It's less than the Nike Alphafly and Vaporfly, but both of those are discounted at the moment on the Nike app. So not a cheap shoe, but comparable to its competitors. Should you buy this shoe? Well, if like me, you're training for marathon, they should definitely be on your shortlist. I've got a couple of others that are in the frame for the next marathon. Will I reach for the Sky Plus? Testing in time will tell. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, it'd be great if you did the like button. As always, there'll be lots of stuff down in the description below and I'll happily answer any questions you put into the comments. There'll be a big blue subscribe button popping up there and some related videos there. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, just keep running along. Thank <laughs> you.